Hello, everyone. I'm Cindy Bank. I'm the Associate Director of the Program and Practical Policy Engagement here at the Ford School. And I am very excited to welcome you all to our um, kickoff for this semester, Young Leaders in Public Service, with City Council person, Gabriela Santiago Romero. Um, first, I want to acknowledge Miriam Nagarin, who is my associate at P3E, who will be handling all the technical um, issues for this event, and um, also our community engagement manager, DeAndre Calvert, who just signed on. Um, I hope everybody will um, you know, feel comfortable for those. I know some of you are driving and doing some other things, but if you would turn on, if you wouldn't mind turning on your cameras if you're if you're comfortable. Um, and then, um, so uh, Gabby, I hope it's okay if I call you Gabby, um, will, she'll, she's gonna give some introductory remarks and then we will turn it over to Q and A's. And we really want this to be, we really would like this to be something that is interactive. And so that you can have a conversation with, with Gabby. So um, without further ado, I'm gonna turn it over to her. Thank you, Gabby, for being with us today. Yeah, no, of course. Thank you, Cindy, and thank you to the Ford School, and thank you everybody who's joining on the call. I know we all, we're all probably Zoomed out. So there's a lot of Zoom fatigue. Being in person is a lot better. There's usually pizza along with events like these at U of M, so apologies. Um, but I see some people with coffee, so I hope you've got your, your, your breakfast, your water, your coffee in. Um, and I'm excited to be here. So as mentioned, um, I am council member Gabriela Santiago Romero here in the city of Detroit. I, pre I preside my work over District 6. And for folks who don't know um, District 6 in Detroit, Often people think of District 6 as just Southwest Detroit, um, but frankly, it is so much more. It encompasses a little bit of downtown, Midtown, Woodbridge, Cork Town, okay. Southwest Detroit, um, area codes 4217, which is very close to the Marathon Refinery, 4204, which is above Warren. Um, so it's, it's a very large district. It's a very diverse district in, in backgrounds, in incomes, salaries, and needs. Um, so we can get into all of that work um, and what it means to be an elected, to be serving so many different folks um, who, who all require your attention and care. Um, and I'm excited to dive in and share a little bit about my work and why I'm even doing this in the first place. And I do want this to be interactive. So I, I will share my story, try to be brief. I was given 15, 20 minutes. I um, don't think I'll take all that time, but would love to answer any questions afterwards and would love to hear, hear from folks that are on this call. I'm only going to assume that the people here care about local elections, care about our, our local governments, or just being engaged in general and creating change. So I'd love to hear about yourself as well and any questions that you might have for, for yourself and, and, and how you can do this work as well. Um, but for me, I, I always start my story by and if people who, and I, I'm laughing because my, my executive assistant's behind me, he knows the story by heart. I, I always start my story by talking about the first time that Akamata was born. So I'm an immigrant originally from Mexico, um, but I came to the States when I was one and I was raised in Southwest Detroit to a single mother. And I didn't know we were poor until I was in middle school and I was crying to my mom for new Nikes. Don't remember if it was Jordans or Air Forces that I wanted, but all the girls in school had new shoes and I wanted to look fresh too. Um, so I asked my mom who was cooking dinner for us, she had her back towards me. And I asked her, mommy, can you, can you buy me new shoes? And she told me, no, Mika, I can't. And I couldn't understand why, but I knew poverty was a thing. So I asked her real, real, real meekly, I was like, mom, are we poor? And she turned around, shoved the food in my, the spoon in my face and said, you didn't know we were poor, laughing at me. Um, and I felt really dumbfounded. I had no idea that we were poor. Because um, growing up, there was always food in my table. My mom always provided for us. The lights were always on, the heat always worked. Um, the, the, the image that we hear of poverty was not the, the life that I lived because my needs were always met. But it was really later in life that I realized that the food on my, uh, on my table was often picked up at a local church or a food pantry. My mom would take me with her sometimes and she would pay $15 to get a box full of, um, full of food. Um, my mom worked seven days a week from the moment that she woke up to the moment that she went to bed to put her money uh, to, together to be able to pay our bills, um, which allowed us to live our lives with dignity. 
And she told me while I was growing up, me kind of go to school, get a good education, something she wasn't able to do back in Mexico past the third grade. Um, so I did that. I listened to my mom. I, I first person to go to college in my family, graduated from Detroit Mercy University. And I studied international business because quite frankly, in this capitalistic system, um, that was where my mind went in order to, to, to provide for ourselves, in order to sustain my family, in, in order to meet our needs. Um, but quite frankly, I was raised in the city of Detroit, um, a Detroit that is full of social justice warriors and leaders and fighters. Um, and when I was in college, it didn't really sit well with me that I was learning, frankly, about just the bottom line, only about how to make the corporations the most amount of money. Um, we were often asked, what would you do to balance your budget? And primarily um, young kids, uh, would raise their hands and say, I will cut costs by cutting pay for, for my workers. I'll cut salaries, I'll cut hours, I'll cut benefits. And they were being awarded for this. Um, this did not sit well with me. It was really frustrating. It was pretty terrifying that they were graduates leaving the school to continue this cycle of capitalism that was really harmful, um, that was keeping many in, in my family um, marginalized, um, really impoverished. And I was, in, I was in college during the recession. So when I was driving back home, there were dads with their pink slips having a cigar in the middle of the day and having a cigarette in the middle of the day because they had just lost their job because here were corporations cutting um, jobs in order to, to, to balance their budgets. Um, thankfully, during this time, Rashida Tlaib was my state rep and she was a fighter for workers. She stood up to Marathon Refinery when they were poisoning us here in Southwest Detroit. She stood up to corporations that wanted to, to, to cut back on our benefits and, and to cut back on, on, on us unionizing, um, which to me gave me a lot of hope to have someone um, from my community, a woman of color, a woman who comes from immigrant families um, who was fighting for everyone. Um, so quite frankly, if it wasn't for Congresswoman Tlaib, um, I would not be here. I, I, I would not have, I think, um, the strength or, 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 the, or, or the, the craziness, because you got to be a little crazy to do this work, um, to, to, to believe that I can actually accomplish this. Um, but thankfully, I graduated. I stayed firm in the belief that you, you, you can change things from the inside, that it's important to know how business works. It's important to know how it functions. Um, and I'm using these those skills today on city council. All we do is review contracts. All we do is review budgets. So thankfully I am using that degree um, and I'm using it for something that I feel feel good about. Um, I, I've, I've worked for the county. I've worked for Warren Evans um, right after college. I was an executive assistant there. And quite frankly, um, that was a, a reality check of how much work our, our government needs. Um, the Wayne County at that time, I believe it's different now. I, I would hope that it's um, a, a different now. It was working out of papers and files. And here I was able to send files in the zip folder online and and we ask ourselves, why are things taking so much time? It really is quite frankly, because a lot of our local municipalities um, are, are not up to speed to technology, are not up to speed um, in order to be able to provide us the services that we need. And I'm, and I'm seeing that now, even on city council, which we can get to. Um, but for me, it became very evident that it's important that we have people, young people, people who are willing to learn to, 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 to accept change in, in order to really better service residents, because quite frankly, um, and many of us that are angry at, at the government have, have complete right to be, and um, we have a long way to go. And um, so after the county though, after experiencing that and seeing everybody had a master's degree, everybody that I loved was a social worker, um, and many of them had gone to the School of Social Work at U of M, I decided to apply. I recently graduated in 2018 um, with my master's in social work. So that's my connection to U of M. Um, I'm very proud of, of being able to go um, and, and, and the support that I got from the university. Um, I worked really hard. I was on student senate, uh, student, student union. I was in student union um, at U of M. I was the president there, super funny. Um, and for me, it's been someone that's always been very engaged on campus um, and in the community. And I think that's an important skill and trait and um, things that if that's something that you do now, please continue to do uh, because we need folks that are willing to take on those extra leadership um, opportunities and, and lead them well. Um, and really for me, 
that experience of, of running the campaign, we ran the slate, even though we didn't need to, it was a lot of fun. Um, and I think for me, it was a, a little a little taste, a little practice of, of what it would be to put together a campaign on a larger scale. Um, for myself, I never necessarily grew up wanting to be in politics or wanting to be a politician. Um, quite frankly, I always grew up protesting them. And the first time someone actually mentioned to me about going into politics, I, once again, I was, I was a child, I was in middle school, I was crying to my teacher um, about how we have global change, global climate change, and how it was real. I was really scared and frustrated even back then. And I was talking to her about how I think we should design cars to breathe in carbon dioxide and breathe out oxygen like plants. And so whoever is in science can figure that out. Um, and my teacher said, well, you know, you should be a scientist. You should go into that and, and work in chemistry or whatever. And I laughed. I said, I'm not good at math. I don't want to do that. Although I think we're all good at math. It just takes practice. Um, that, that wasn't something that I, I loved at that time. So she said, okay, fine go into politics, be a politician. And quite frankly, I don't know if, if y'all remember 10 years ago, 20 years ago, um, I, I didn't think that was possible. My response to her was, me? I, I thought you had to be an old white man to be a politician. Um, again, this is a fifth grader, sixth grader responding to, to her, her middle school teacher. Because um, that was what we saw all of the time. Um, we didn't see people like us. We didn't see diverse leadership, young folks, women of color, queer folks um, leading in these roles. Um, so honestly, I put that in the back of my mind and never thought about it again. But thankfully, throughout my, my career, my, my life, um, people like Rashida, people like Senator Chang, people like um, my former councilwoman Raquel, all incredible people who have ran for office who have told me to run since I was 17, 18 years old um, because they've seen me in the community. They, they've seen the work that I've done. And because of that, of that push, because of being told to run over a hundred times, I started to believe it a little bit more. And quite frankly, I think that's the unfortunate reality for, for when many women, many women of color, many people of color, um, many queer folks, disabled folks. If, if we don't see it and if we're not asked to do it, we don't really believe that we can. Um, but thankfully, I've had the supports and the encouragement of incredible people in my community. Um, so after I graduated from the School of Social Work, I, I was the policy and research director at We the People Michigan. We're an incredible organization. I cried for a month after um, winning the, the election for city council, realizing that I would be leaving my job at We the People. Um, but We the People is a statewide organization that I helped fund. Um, I was one of the, the, the first three um, that, that were hired in, and we created this organization um, really rooted in community and building power for marginalized communities across the states, um, across races and backgrounds, because we believe um, that those of us that are the most impoverished, working class, middle class, um, are often pinned against each other by race. So if you're up in, in the Kirana, if you're up in the UP, um, you often hear, um, especially from, from those in power, um, that those people in Detroit, and we all know what that means, those people in Detroit um, are asking for too much money and that's why we can't provide you money for housing. And we hear the opposite in the city of Detroit. You know, those people up in Oakland don't care about you uh, or, or whatever the case may be, in Warren, you know, because they're asking for more funding for whatever the case may be, we can't give you anything that you need. So really we've been divided. Um, we've all been told to believe in the scarcity mindset. And those of us that work at We The People or work at We The People believe that is complete BS. Um, look, at our, look at this nation, look at this world. We are full of abundance. It's really us that are being broken against each other. It's, it's really a leadership that wants us to believe this and this believe in this narrative um, that is keeping us from achieving what we should be able to achieve for, from accessing all the resources and services that we deserve. Um, so while working at We The People, I was once again approached by, by friends and local leadership to consider running for office. So the first time I ran was in 20, 2020. I, I ran for county commissioner. It was my first attempt and um, I actually announced in 2019. 
in October of 2019. And I had gone through every how to run for office training. I've talked to everybody that I knew in office. I had really prepared myself because I frankly don't like to lose. I don't like to make mistakes. I wanted to be as prepared as possible. Um, but nobody prepares you to how to run for office during a pandemic. Um, so as soon as March hit, I became paralyzed because I knew what this meant. I knew that I couldn't knock on doors if I cared about people's safety, and I do. Um, I knew that I couldn't ask for money because how when people were losing their jobs? And quite frankly, when the federal government and the local government was now responding to our people, how can I go around telling people to vote for me, to vote for change when the people that we voted for won't, weren't even working for us? Um, so quite frankly, I put a pause on my campaign I didn't campaign for a few months. I shifted completely over to mutual aid efforts with local friends. About 20 of us got together. We raised around $75,000. We provided 300 families, direct service, food, um, translation services, support for them to get um, their, 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 their federal checks. Um, because for me, that's what was needed. And, and that's truly who I am in the core. And quite frankly, politics doesn't matter if they're not responding to you. Um, so we paused that I did not win um, because you, I was running against a 20 year incumbent, um, but we got incredibly close. I lost by a thousand absentee votes. Um, so we won election night, we lost a thousand absentee votes, and that is a huge win to be completely honest for, to run against a 20 year incumbent in my community. Um, after the loss, it was hurtful, it was very painful. It's, it's a painful thing to go through um, that I had accepted that I was going to try again in two years. Um, that I was going to focus um, completely on, or on organizing. And that was that until January of last year. Around this time, I was actually contemplating running for city council because my councilwoman Raquel was not seeking re-election and she reached out to me asking if I would run for her seat. Um, this is literally a dream come true to, to, to be asked by, by, by your city, by, by your sitting council member or your, your sitting representative that you really respect. Um, she has mentored me, I've never worked with her, but she really mentored me and, and shared a lot with me, her experience and, and what was needed. So I, I said yes. Um, actually, I said yes, and then I said no, because um, I got scared. I, I would have to have the primaries were going to be in August. Um, quite frankly, I, I, I had to give myself time to, to run. Um, but then Rashida Tlaib called me, and she's like, I heard you back down. Don't do that. We're going to support you. Um, and that's when I said, okay, if, if the community has my back, um, and, and I know that I've done a lot of work in the past for, for the county commission seats and there's overlaps in, in, in the districts, um, I will try again. And we tried again and it was beautiful. We had an amazing campaign. Um, a large majority of my campaign team are U of M grads, um, love them so much, still, in, still undergrads, so incredibly smart, brilliant people um, who helped get me through the finish line. And we ran a really amazing race. We ran, um, we won by almost 75% of the votes. So 74.5%. We raised around $140,000, which is so much money. I first raised 40. I raised 40K in my first race. Um, we had a ton of interns and volunteers. Um, we knocked the districts twice. Um, we put a lot of work because for me, I didn't just want people to think that Raquel was going to give me her seat, and that was that. That's not who I am. That's not the point. Um, we still have to work hard. People still needed to know who I was, how to contact me, what my values were, what I wanted to do um, for them as their city council member. And now we're here. I'm calling you live from my office in downtown. Um, we've started, we're about a week and a half in, um, and my team, I'm really proud to say, we are all moved in, um, fully staffed, Computers, emails, phone numbers, we're ready to go. Um, and there are other offices that are still um, catching up and, and getting and, and getting their, their offices together. Um, but we're ready and we're really excited. And I'm really honored to be doing this work. Um, wanted to mention just briefly before going into questions, would love to answer any questions or hear what people may have like concerns of or ideas of. Um, but for me, why I'm doing this and why I think we, those of us that um, are active in the community, do have an organizing or a social work or a community mindset to do this work is because we need us. We need people who are willing to work hard, 
who like myself who are willing to come in during your winter break to clean out your whole office so your staff can just come in and start from day one. Um, people who care, um, you'd be surprised how many people just don't care, how many people are not willing to be innovative, um, who are not willing to be forward thinking. Um, I mentioned the frustrations that I lived through at the county um, at the lack of technology, which to me just makes more sense for efficiency. Um, here in the city of Detroit, we, there is no streamlined way of doing your work. So to be honest, every office has to figure it out. When quite frankly, I, I'm already thinking about, should we pass a local ordinance where we just have like, you know, templates like like how every office should run efficiently from day one because quite frankly we're wasting a lot of time here trying to have all of us trying to catch up and, and, and learn things on on the go what if we had things already set in place where you can start like any other organization any other corporate business when you get there they give you your manual here's how you do your work here are all the links to, to to your drives here's and we don't get that here which is really frustrating um so those of you who, who care about innovation who care about efficiency who care about doing good work, you should be doing this. Um, the last thing that I'll mention is, um, one of the things that I'm most excited about is just the team that I have. Um, I have hired people that are way smarter than me, um, that are just really brilliant. Um, and they are making this office incredible. And because of them and the opportunity that is being provided for being in, in, in this space, um, I think we're going to be able to serve our residents really well. So for me, it's about teamwork. It's about bringing innovation, bringing fun, um, bringing efficiency and getting things done. Because um, quite frankly, I know from a very personal level, having people in leadership who care, who do their jobs well, really does make an impact on our lives. Um, so I'll pause there and happy to hear any questions or concerns, stories, ideas um, from other folks. Gabby, um, I mean, I'm, I'm, I'm like beaming with pride as a mom, you know, and your mother must be also so proud um, for, for what you've done and your passion for, for what you're doing just really just comes through. Um, Miriam put in the chat, you know, if you want to ask your question, raise your hand or put it in the chat, I'll ask it. Um, we had a few come in with the RSVPs. I know I see Matt Dargay is on. Matt, do you want to ask your question or should I just ask it? Oh, my apologies. I, I don't have a question. Was my hand raised? Yes. No, no, you just, you, you sent in a question when you are a CP. And your hand is raised. So. Oh, I did. And now my hand is raised. Wonderful. Uh, well, yes, now that I think about it, I did submit a question. Um, my apologies. If you, if you wouldn't mind reading it. Okay, sure. Happy Thank to you. do it. So Matt asked, when running for office, were you ever asked what makes you a better fit for office than a lawyer or business person? What did you say or would you say in response? Uh, honestly, thankfully, no one was ever that forward. <laughs> um, <laughs> I, I, and if they were, I could just, you know, say I have my business degree. Um, I have been asked, you know, when you're running for office, they do ask you about what makes you different from your opponents. Um, and I, I would say that as well, just my experience and, and, and what I've done in the past. But to be honest, I never had that question. And if I did, um, I, I you know, would answer honestly, because I, I do think that I'm qualified for this position. But not only that, I don't think that you necessarily need a business degree to do this work. I don't think you need, I don't have a policy degree necessarily that I, you know, got from the Ford School. I have a policy focused social work degree and focus on social evaluation or program evaluation, um, social work and policy. For me, um, if I didn't have any of that experience, but if I had this passion and drive that I do, I, I think my main shift of, of, um, or, or focus for, for that would be, um, I know the community well. Um, I, I would hope that if people run for this position, you have relationships in the community, which I do. So if, if I only had that, you know, I have relationships in the community, which is actually very powerful and important. Um, and, and I would say that I, I know what our needs are. Um, I, I, and, and, and I know who to go to to address those needs. So don't think you need all that. Um, but if, if that was to be asked, I, I, I would say in that way. Well, and I don't know if Matt is one of, because we have a number of social work students on, but specifically from the social work background, you bring a lot 
absolutely serving your constituents. Yeah, a hundred percent into that. Um, I actually on on staff I have Joelle Reyes Clan, who both of us graduated from the school of social work together. He's managing my community. Um, residents and and um, institutional services. So my office, although we you know we we are here to do policy, um, we are also local municipalities that that support our communities. And I have a social worker on staff um, that does that work because I know that he can do that as a social worker. That's great. Um, we also had Harrison Parker who had mentioned that he's driving. So I'm not going to ask you if you want to ask your questions was um, basically asking, what advice do you have for those of us, or I don't know, I'm, I'm putting this on you, um, Harrison, are considering running for office? I would say if you're considering to run for office, yay. That's very exciting. I hope that you do. Um, I would also say that I would ask yourself why. Um, why are you doing this and, 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 and for what? What are, what are your hopes to, to do? Um, I... I know that I mentioned for myself and we're all different, but I know for myself, especially as a woman, um, and this is just like to just be to be frank and to be honest about the realities of a situation, um, to, to the original question of if, if you don't have a business degree, um, I was asked questions specifically about the budget. I was asked questions specifically about like certain policies, which thankfully I knew about, but quite frankly, in my mind, I would often leave those meetings like, well, I hope they're asking my opponent this. <laughs> like, I hope that my, my, my opponent is getting, you know, these very specific questions as well. Because quite frankly, when I see people interact with, with, with male candidates, it's very friendly. <laughs> it's, it's like there's no doubt in their mind that they can do this work. There's no doubt in their mind that they can understand budgeting and policy. For me, I, I, I do, I might not get those direct um, like questions of like, where's your degree at in business? Um, but I, 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 do, and I, I do feel the skepticism, um, sometimes the, the, the way that I'm approached. Um, but for, for those that are interested in running, I would really say to know yourself, know yourself, know why you're running, know what you hope to do. And if you feel at all that you need a little bit more preparation, lean into that feeling because then you maybe do, I think we all do. Um, so what is that? Is that getting to know your district a little bit more? Is that feeling comfortable with policy and budgeting, which honestly you learned it along the way. But not only that, do you like it? Because quite frankly, I think some people go into this, into this work and you don't realize that it's not whatever you might think, which is like you have the power, you're, you know, whatever. Um, you're in meetings every day, all of the time. You are looking at contracts, you are looking at budgets, you're looking at money, you're approving. Um, and do you want that responsibility? Is that what makes you happy? Um, so I would just ask yourself a lot of questions, journal, reflect. Um, I would ask a lot of friends that you might know that are in office, um, have coffee with them, dinner, get a drink, whatever the case may be. Um, have a time for yourself to explore this opportunity um, and, and make sure that it's what you want um, and also try it. And if you decide you don't wanna do it, go right ahead, do something else. I, I know for myself, um, People in government don't make a ton of money. Um, we don't make six figures. And looking at my check that I'm gonna to get tomorrow for the first time, I'm like, I can make more as a consultant. <laughs> I was like, I'm all right, so this is a service. Um, so make sure that you're ready for that. And I already, I'm, I'm already telling myself, if I don't like this in four or eight years, that it's okay. I will hopefully inspire the next generation of leadership. I will hopefully structure it in a way that works better, functions better. Um, and I can go back into organizing, go go back into doing something else that makes me happy that, that I think still um, uh, meets my goal of really creating change in my community. Great, thank you. Um, okay, um, I'm gonna call Alyssa. I'm not gonna, I, would, I was thinking about putting her on the spot because I know she's our one scientist who's on. Um, well, okay. yeah, I have a science related question. Oh, okay, because okay. I, because it was sort of interesting. I was thinking, you know, she recently got her PhD and, but she got hooked on the policy side of things, but I'm not quite yeah. sure if she can explain how to make a car act like a plant. I can't, yeah, I didn't, I didn't specialize in combustion, but I'm sure that there's someone working on it. <laughs> um, but I, I was curious to know, like when you're, you know, making decisions, um, 
in your role, like how do you go about reaching out to experts and what experts do you target? You know, like how do you decide, okay, I need help on this issue. Mm-hmm. There's a lot of people who study things. I mean, even though it yeah. seems sometimes like science is small, it's actually not, right? There's a, a ton of people to reach out to. So how do you go about prioritizing and getting in contact with, with experts? Yeah, so <laughs> a funny story about sciences. Um, I'm actually, I'm, I'm dating a scientist. She works for the EPA. And I remember the first time when I met her, I was like, I believe in science as if that was going to be like a win <laughs> for our conversation. Um, but Science is incredibly important. All of the expertise that people know is incredibly important. As I mentioned, I hired people that are smarter than me. So my chief of staff actually has, she's a lawyer. She went to Oxford. Um, she has a background in water, water science. Like I forget what it is. Um, not only that, but in these positions, you have access to the EPA, you have access to Eagle, you have access to other scientists. Um, you have access to lawyers. Um, and, and then I also don't want to think of just those what we think of as normally you know experts but i have access to community community leaders pastors community organizers executive assistants of of local nonprofits. um so when it comes to decision making i think in this position no one should make decisions on their own um i don't know everything um and quite frankly it's really my job to find those experts seek them out ask them questions um and then really make my decision based on 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 those on on on, on that feedback my policy analysts are also incredible um ray who used to work for the president um president jones office or president brenda um her office she is now with me so she's got it like an institutional knowledge she she knows who to reach out to when it comes to experts that we might need. And then Hank Kelly um, is coming in. They worked for Grand Rapids and they're a city planner. Um, so the folks that I have, I, I have them with me for a reason. And I know it's because I'm going to need um, them to help me in, in, in a lot of aspects. And they are very de- detail oriented, which is incredibly important in this work. So if I don't feel comfortable with something, I'm also allowed to not vote. I'm also allowed to say no or say I'm not ready or, you know, so for me, um, prepared to make decisions as, as, as best as possible based on, on, on feedbacks from others. And I guess one of my, can I ask a quick follow-up question to that? Mm-hmm. Um, you know, my question would be, you know, how do you balance breadth and depth? I mean, when you're making a decision, like specifically, I mean, just to give an example, like upgrading wastewater treatment plants in Detroit to more efficiently, blah, 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 blah. There's a million, you know, ideas about this and they all require money from the government almost always, right? And so you have to make decisions about should we invest in this technology to make, you know, you know, theoretically, you know, anaerobic reduction to like make things more efficient, right? Mm -hmm. Do I put money into that? Like, how do you balance the breadth and depth with that? Like, how do you, do you choose equal numbers of people on both sides? Do Mm. you, pick one person from Wayne State and one person from Dearborn and one person from, I mean, how do you, like, I just feel like, you know, it sounds like maybe there's a lot of personal connections involved, but like, how do you go about, you know, making sure that you get to know everybody and also get to know kind of the broad, people who have a broad view and people who have a very narrow view? Yeah, so for me, that's a good question because I think oftentimes we can be in our own little bubbles, um, only reach out to the folks that we know, um, which I think limits your your ability to see really the full picture and to also hear about other ideas. Um, so I will start from from my from my office. I, I think it's about looking everywhere, um, reaching out to the folks that do have the qualifications, that do have the experience, um, regardless of, of, of who they are, really. Um, this can be from across the aisle. There might be a you know very well-known scientist that's actually a like, uh, libertarian or you know considers himself, whatever the case may be. Um, and that is okay if they are coming in with the experience with the end goal of um, you know coming up with a solution um, to this problem. And I think that's important. Um, I, I think that that gives us the ability to really learn um, and, and to get to, to 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 the answers that we need, and to the breadth and 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 and, the, and to how deep do we get into the work. Um, that I think, because government is so slow, um, the process is really important. And because it's not like it needs to, or nor will it happen next week. The process to me is important, bringing those people along, being very intentional about the conversations about who is at the table is gonna, I think, make a huge difference. And I think that really matters. Um, So when you're beginning to talk about 
um, infrastructure, when you're beginning to talk about whatever the case may be, starting off very intentionally with the experts that know things, um, with the people that have always been doing this work, um, and, and not starting from scratch, um, starting from, from people with expertise that's been doing the, the, this work already. Um, that's, that's how I, I see the process being. And I think that there's always gonna be a lot of bumps in the road. Um, it's gonna, you know, as people, we always discuss and have conversations. So I, my hope is that eventually we come to a conclusion um, that, that, that we're happy with and, and actually addressing our problems. Hi, baby. And thanks for bringing your baby along. <laughs> it's nice we have a baby and we have a cat. I saw Rachel had her cat on her lap. Um, we have a question from Caroline. Hi, yeah, thanks Congresswoman for being here. It's really, I love hearing your story and um, I find it really inspiring and encouraging. Um, I actually have two questions. You can choose which one to answer if you want. Um, one of them, so in your bio that they sent us um, for the event, it, you, it talks about um, how you did um, mutual aid um, projects during like when COVID hit. And so I would love to hear about that experience, like challenges that you faced with that and like lessons learned getting that off the ground. Um, and then my other question is, is in terms of, um, I guess like scale of government, how you balance your commitment to local organizing and local government versus statewide organizing and those different priorities. And obviously they overlap, but just how you navigate um, those two different scales of, of um, how you invest in communities. Yeah, and the work that we do. Thank you for those questions. And thank you for calling me Congresswoman. I'm not a Congresswoman, I'm a Councilwoman. That's, Councilwoman, <laughs> thank you. That's totally fine. I was like, ooh, you will Councilwoman, um, <laughs> I apologize. No, no, thank you. I just put that other folks to know. Um, so I'll start with the last question, the, the, the scale of local versus state versus federal and what that looks like. Um, so that's a really great question. And I'm already coming across that question myself. So things that we want to do here locally. So I would love to have us pass or change our tax system. Um, Detroit pays very high taxes. Um, residents here are very angry for the taxes that we pay. We, we pay taxes for working here. Um, and all of this is going where? People are often saying my school system's still bad. Um, you don't pick up the trash on time. Um, the lights don't work. All of these things are true. So how do we deal with that? You look into the tax system, you change the tax system, but in the city of Detroit, we can't because we are preempted to by the state. So really it's a state issue. So as much as I wanna go ahead and say, hey, everyone, I have this great idea about a dual tax system where we tax land, where then we do property to really help spe speculators stop speculating um, and really invest in, in economic developments because that's the idea behind that dual tax system that already exists in, in other cities we can't do that here in the city of Detroit. So when it comes to organizing, what does that look like? I go back to my relationships. I go back to where the people can do this work because they are a statewide organization because they have organizers across the state that understand state politics, um, that have relationships with their local officials because we've been doing this work for a while. Myself as the policy and research director, um, that was my job to do to talk to lo local electeds and connect them to organizers so that we were able to push our work in our campaigns which the, the biggest um, latest campaign I was supporting was the Drive Michigan Forward campaign to reestablish driver's licenses for, for, for all people in the state of Michigan. Um, they were taken away from undocumented people in 2007, 2008, um, which has um, led to a huge influx of deportations. Um, my uncle included in, in a case that thankfully he stayed, um, but he, he dealt with that same fear of, 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 of separation. Um, so for me, it's understanding the systems, it's understanding how to plug into them because we still can. And as I work or as I ask um, my, my colleagues and comrades um, at, you know, in the state level to push this, I can have conversations locally saying, hey, I would love to do this, but we can't do this unless we pass this in the states um, and, and organize locally to have residents here understand that. That's one example um, because we can't do everything in the city that we wanna do. We're limited in our powers. Quite frankly, the city of Detroit has a strong um, mayoral seat. So the mayor can really do a lot more, um, um, a, a, lot, a lot easier than city council can. 
So I think that's part of it, is, is understanding those differences. Um, to the question about mutual aid and the, the learning. So I had never done mutual aid before, and I knew it was a thing um, when COVID hit, I believe it was a Wednesday. It was a Wednesday that we shut down because it was the day before um, the, the Tuesday of that Tuesday, I was out passing out my literature because that was the election for that was a presidential primary. So it was it was that Wednesday that the state shut down and I freezed up. I said, how can I shift my, my, my focus? And I thought to myself, well, there are probably a lot of people like myself that have resources to give. They just don't know how to reach those people that need the support. So I was like, what if we can create a document that anyone can just call or fill out asking for support and anyone can call or anyone can fill out providing support and then just match them. That was me trying to be a social worker and matching those that need and those that can. Um, so did that the next day, sent out a, an Excel sheet, um, was working on my own really. And my friend, Michelle Martinez called me and she's like, what are you doing? I'm like, I don't know, but I'm trying to do this mutual aid work. She's like, who's helping you? I'm like, nobody, I would need help. She's like, yeah, you do, because you can't do this alone. That was learning number one. Um, don't do things alone. You can't really do things alone. Things done with other people are just so much better. Um, so we reached out, we got some volunteers. We built a beautiful ecosystem. Of, uh, we were a well-oiled machine. It was a little rocky for the first month while we were gathering volunteers, while we were all fill figuring out what our roles were, are, when we were creating those roles, because we had fundraisers, we had people calling people that were needed, that needed support. We had people driving food, we had people collecting food. Um, and and then we had, uh, you know, people that we needed to drop them off to. So that took us a while to figure out. But once we did, we were a well-oiled machine. We did this for about all summer. Um, and we are still connected. For us, we st we're still active on our WhatsApp. And quite frankly, when the parents um, which is out to any of us saying, hey, I can't pay my light bill. We do what we call these some um, very fast fundraisers on, on our Instagram. And we're able to raise $2,000 in a day and, and, and pay the, the, the mother's um, light bill. And whatever we have left over, we will pay another bill or we'll provide it for food. Um, and when there was the, the flooding that happened this past summer, um, we got together and we cleaned out about a dozen basements, which is actually really hard to do y'all cleaning these basements in the flood was so much harder than i than i thought it was going to be but we did a dozen of them primarily for seniors um in in the city of detroit so that was some learning um and i think that there's always going to be learning in, in in the mutual aid world mac has a question hi yeah thank you so much for your time um just having been familiar with working with uh, Councilmember Castaneda Lopez, um, I saw a lot of the dynamics that happen within Detroit City Council, um, particularly just on the subcommittee meetings and, and between other council members. So I'm curious, how have you been able to so far navigate more of the political dynamics uh, and some of the tensions there with really like keeping your goals and your mission stable and not getting um, off track by the way, you know, some of the politics operate? Yeah, thanks for that question. I think for me, it's it's really goes down to how you do your work. Um, I I am not Rick Hall. We are two completely different people. Um, people often think that I'm Rick Hall 2.0, mini Rick Hall, that I have worked for her or worked with her. Not the case. Um, I love Raquel deeply. I think she's incredible. I think she's done incredible work, but we work very differently. Um, so, and not only that, we have a completely different council now. So the politics look different because the personalities that were once here aren't. Um, I think also the, 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 the nasty politics, although we still have one under federal investigation, um, many of that is, is, is outside of, of, of this new council's realm. Um, so I think that helps. Um, we have a new president, um, uh, Mary Sheffield, who has, um, from what I'm told already, um, been a 180 compared to our past president, um, who has been known to not necessarily be the biggest team player to not necessarily give all council members the same kind of respect, including, unfortunately, Raquel. Um, and I think the way that Raquel responded sometimes was incredibly feisty and like very in your face. And I'm more of a kill them with kindness and 
um, often I'll swallow my pride um, for, for, for the betterment of the work, which is honestly something that people should also think about when they're trying to do this work. So I'm navigating politics a little bit differently. Um, personality wise, we're different folks. And there is, there's a different council now where I really do hope we actually work as a team, which is gonna be very important this is local politics this isn't the state house where you have divided republicans democrats this is nonpartisan. folks should be on the same page supporting residents um to the best of our ability so really hoping that we all come with that mentality and that we are able to to, to better serve and i know deandre has a question yeah, sure. That that was actually kind of my question, which is great because that means the Ford School is teaching, you know, <laughs> teaching our students ways to think. The people that actually work for uh, for the government, um, Councilwoman, it's such a pleasure to to hear you talk. I was actually uh, Council President Sheffield's Director of Community Relations through oh, her first yeah. term and part of her second term. So your your energy and your passion is actually making me miss the 13th floor of KMAC right now. Uh, that's that's so great. Um, you know, as you mentioned before, you know, you were you were community minded. You're coming from, you know, um, such a great background that you really understand what people are going through. Kind of along with that question, you know, you're in a district that is very diverse, more diverse than people give it credit for. You know, mm -hmm. I, I remember, you know, representing councilwoman and, you know, hearing about all the corporations and the companies and all the money that I don't think a lot of people realize a lot of outside money comes into the city. How do you think about going through your first term? balancing the community with all these other interests that want to bring development and people hear jobs and when you disagree it's like oh well you're anti-job you know uh, right. how, how do you plan on, on balancing that for the better betterment of the city but particularly the district that you know kind of born and raised you sure thanks for that question happy to hear and um, that that you know the 13th floor well um mary sheffield's awesome I'm, I'm excited that she's that she's president now um to be frank, I'm a little terrified and not terrified about necessarily making a mistake, but about the politics and what that would look like. Because quite frankly, as you mentioned, people in my district want jobs. People in my district, some of them want that new coffee shop. Some of them do want that new restaurant. Um, but quite frankly, also, we are being gentrified. We are being priced out. Um, if you put that coffee shop in there, why is nobody from the block working there? Why is somebody who just moved here through like, 30 weeks ago, um, no harm, but also where is the opportunity? Where is the equity? Um, and I think that's what makes people upset is that we don't mind new neighbors, we don't mind new people. What we mind is feeling stepped on, which is a lot of residents feel that, feeling as if you're being ignored um, and being left out of this new development and opportunity. And District 6 does have that. It's it's Cork Town, y'all. It's Midtown, it's downtown, it's the riverfronts. Um, and 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 there are conflicting um, needs. I've I've met with developers who are like, look, my neighborhood, my neighborhood, when they live downtown, in my mind, downtown sure is a neighborhood, but it also is completely different when it comes to the the, the scale of the economies and the scale of support and resources. It's still downtown. Um, but I, I hear you, ma'am, who who owns the building, who wants to care about your neighborhood. Um, so for me. It's about meeting everybody's needs to the best of my ability because she does live in her neighborhood downtown and she does need to have her street lights on and she does need to feel safe. And I do care about everybody feeling that way. Um, so I think I need to be in conversation with everyone, um, talking with folks so that when it comes down to maybe a sale or a contract, and if I feel like it's not meeting all of the community benefit agreements that I can be meeting, I'm gonna vote no, but I do hope ma'am that you understand why I did that. Um, and if I ever say yes to a contract or yes to new development, um, because I've had the union workers telling me this will bring us jobs and people in my community in my neighborhood are like, oh, you're just saying yes to something new, a new corporation, a new, whatever the case may be. I, I, I'm able to tell them yes and, it provides jobs for our neighbors. Yes, and here's the job application to take these jobs that we're bringing in. Um, so that is one of the trickiest parts, I think, about this work is that I am now part of the system. Um, as much as I fought it, um, I am wearing this hat, um, but I have to remember that it's just a hat. Um, a hat that I can take off, a hat that I do take off at the end of the day um, when I'm playing my 30 minutes of Animal Crossing because I just need to be in an island somewhere um, and, and, and to know that I, 
I'm able to have conversations with people um, and really let them know why I'm making the, the, decision, the decisions that I'm making. Um, understanding that I'm all about economic development. Um, my families, they're entrepreneurs. My dad has a business, my mom has a business, um, small businesses, but I understand the need to really support um, everyone. So it's gonna be tricky, um, but I, I, I look forward to, to learning along the process really. Awesome. Thank you so much. And I want to say, I fully support you passing something to change the systems in there. When I got hired in March of 2014, I didn't get paid for eight weeks. So because the city was so crazy, no one should ever go through that. I know how onboarding is crazy. So I fully support you changing the systems there because it can make things a lot better if everyone's on the same page and ready to go like you are. Yeah, thank you. Thank you. Sorry, um, we had another student ask about for those of us that are interested in organizing and getting involved, are there internship opportunities? Yes, great question. Yes, there are. Well, there will be. We are just getting started. Um, but Joelle would be the person to reach out to. Let me pick up, grab his um, email real quick. So Joelle Reyes' plan will be, he is drafting our, our program now. Um, and just so folks know the internships that we have, you will be working probably closely with Kristen, who's going to be our director of organizing and strategy. So I have someone on my team specifically um, working with us with the organizing lens, because um, it's going to be, it, for me, I see the power that it brings in, in, in politics, really. So um, Joel and Kristen will be working very closely on our internship program. and and. For me, I've gone through so many internship programs and many of them unpaid. And the ones that have made me the happiest are the ones that I feel as if I did real work, um, as if I was able to take something back with me, put it on my resume, and it's not just you know a sentence, it's, it's actual outcomes. Um, so for us, our internships, um, sign up and be prepared to work, uh, be prepared to attend community meetings, be prepared to provide feedback, to create systems, to, to, to really put input into our work, because um, we desperately will take, um, will, will, will take and, and need all the support that we can get. Great. And if any of our students, um, how would our students contact you if they wanted to follow up after this? So for me, I'm also going to share, um, let me actually share my personal um, I'll share both. So this is my personal. This is for anyone that wants to do a Zoom coffee, or if you're in the city and you want to do a coffee, Santi um, because I also just think mentorship and relationships um, are really powerful. I know that I would not be here if it wasn't for the mentors in my life um, that continue to mentor me and coaches. This is my office email for anyone that would like to connect for something, you know, work related. And then I also have a, um, I'm going to start giving out my work number just because I, I need to start separating my, <laughs> my life, I've, I've realized. But this is my work cell if anybody would like to text me or, or call um, for anything. This is 313-480. This is my number. Thank you for sharing all that. Does anybody yeah. else have another question? No, Gabby, this has been so fabulous. Um, I also want to offer up to you that at some point as you get more settled in that um, DeAndre and I hope can have further conversations with you to see how if you have policy projects that you want groups of students to work on. Um, we have various ways to do it through independent study or actual courses. We also have a great, um, uh, our MPA program now, students have to do a capstone project. So there's all kinds of opportunities for our students to engage and help you do you what you do mm -hmm. um, while they get incredible experience. And um, in some cases, there's sometimes pay for research assistance, but a lot of times it's class credit. So that would be great. Yeah. Yes, no, I agree. I, I would love that. We have a lot of fun projects, just a little insight. We're looking into cannabis in the city. We're looking into housing, into transit, transportation. We've got exciting new train tracks, you know, roads looking into um, to be built in the city. Um, there's just so much. So that would be great. Yeah, wonderful. And um, for everybody, thank you all for attending. And I'm so happy to have so many social work students on. Gabby, thank you so much. Um, I hope the students will join me in thanking you. And um, 
really look forward to having you around for a while so we can work with you and watch what great things you're going to do for the city of Detroit. Thank you. Thanks, Cindy. Thanks, everybody. This was fun. This makes me really happy. I'm excited. I'm going to go back to work now. I'll pump. Um, <laughs> have a great day. Thank you. Bye. Thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you.